Hello, and welcome to the Creative Mojo podcast. My name's Joanne, and I'm your host, as always, and I'm coming to you from my home in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And uh, a warm welcome to any new viewers. I noticed that I picked up a few recently, and it's really happy to see you. And uh, I say see you, but I can't actually see you. <laughs> but uh, it's really uh, great to have you come and watch my podcast, and I hope that uh, uh, you'll continue to enjoy my episodes and a big warm welcome to all my returning viewers as well. Um, it's been quite a while since I podcast at last actually. It's been uh, about six weeks. I had a sort of unexpected little break. Um, life just got away from me. I did uh, I did try to podcast two weeks ago and uh, it, that was very funny because I, I actually started filming an episode. It was uh, late into the day and uh, I was trying in a different location in my living room and it was it was just too dark and I got frustrated and I was tired and all those things and so I after attempting to film a little bit I gave up <laughs> and decided to do it another day but um, yeah as I said uh, um, things have been kind of busy here um, between uh, commitments I have at work and things that have been keeping me from having uh, enough free time to do, uh, to sit down and really focus on an episode. Plus, uh, I've been heavily involved in, um, I've talked on a past episode about uh, uh, my father um, has dementia and it's, uh, it's gotten quite a bit worse in the last, say, six months or so. And uh, my sister and I have become, become quite heavily involved in, in helping my stepmother to sort out uh, care issues for him and um, there's been lots going on with that and that has also taken up a bunch of my time. So between one thing and another, I apologize but I was away for a bit but uh, I'm back now and, and really excited to have a new episode here for you. So um, today is uh, Sunday, July 1st. It's Canada Day uh, here in Canada, obviously. Happy Canada Day to all my Canadian uh, viewers. And um, so I'm going to start off by doing my next draw for our uh, Pattern Socks Cow. I have a year-long Pattern Socks Cow running in the Creative Mojo group on Ravelry. Uh, if you're new to the podcast and want to get in on that, it's a year-long cow, so you can uh, enter at any time. You just have to have cast on Pattern Socks uh, after the 1st of January 2018 and finish them by the end of December 2018. So any time in the year, you can enter as much as you want. You don't have to have one a month or anything like that. And there's one finished object thread for the whole year and I'm drawing all the prizes out of that. And the only real uh, two rules there, one of which is if you've already won a prize for that particular post, that, po that post won't be eligible again. But you can win other prizes for other posts, so other pairs of socks you knit. And, um, and, and it has to be a sock that contains patterning in the sock and that is cables, lace work, texture, um, color work, all those kinds of things. So no plain vanilla socks and no uh, self-striping yarn um, doesn't count as a pattern either. But anything beyond that, anything that that is you adding uh, stuff into the uh, into the sock in the way of texture or as I said cables lace all those good kind of things is they're all eligible if you have socks that you completed uh, earlier this year that you have photos of and or could want to take photos of and and enter them at this point you're more than welcome and uh, uh, to date we have 86 I believe pairs of socks in that uh, finished object thread it's it's really great they're beautiful so many beautiful socks in there and I really enjoy going through and taking a look at uh, what people have been working on and I find it very inspiring although sadly not inspiring enough to have done a whole lot of work on my pattern socks I've been uh, a little negligent but um, I do have some socks to show you this week so that's good <laughs> um, but anyway I want to start by doing the um, draw I do the draw uh, the draws for prizes for that every two months so the last draw was at the beginning of May I believe yeah the end of May sorry um, and so no beginning of May end of April um, because May and June were the next two month period so um, I've uh, drawn from the thread again for uh, a winner for um, for the beginning of July and I thought because it is Canada Day I would uh, that the prize this time will be this lovely little very Canadian um, project bag made by <clears throat> my friend Kim 
who is a yarn dyer and project bag maker and uh, all kinds of things. Uh, she goes by the name of Ginger Snap, Ginger Snap That, uh, on, I can't remember if it's Ginger Snap uh, on Etsy, or Ginger Snap That. She will be in my show notes, which you can find uh, in the episode thread uh, in the Creative Mojo group on Ravelry. Um, <clears throat> if I remember, I will also try to link her um, in the down bar below here on uh, YouTube as well. She very generously donated this bag as a gift for the podcast. So the prize for this round is this wonderful little sock bag. As you can see, it's got um, beavers doing uh, sports, uh, wearing maple leaf shirts. It's, it's very Canadiana themed. Seemed, like I said, very appropriate for Canada Day. Uh, and this lovely sort of birchwood uh, trees. Um, I think that's what that's, that is. It looks like a birchwood forest. Uh, for the lining, it's a really nice bag. Nice size for a, a pair of socks or any other sort of smallish project you're working on. And I'm including also with that a pair of, a set of um, Prairie Dye Studio stitch markers. I really like these snagless stitch markers. Um, uh, Prairie Dye Studios is also a, a Canadian um, maker. She also is from here in Alberta. And uh, I have several sets of her, um, of these stitch markers that I use a lot and really enjoy. So I'm including that with the bag as well. So the winner of this fantastic prize is um, post number 74 from our thread, and that's Mima Cox, who is Marianne. Uh, that particular entry, she did a lovely pair of socks that with a pattern she made up herself just with a cable down the side. They were very pretty. So uh, congratulations, Marianne. Um, again, that's Mima Cox. I uh, will put all that in the show notes as well. And Marianne, if you want to message me on Ravelry or uh, Instagram or here on YouTube or however you want to do that, if you want to message me with your um, address, I will get this in the mail to you. So congratulations. And um, the next prize that I will be giving is at the beginning. Oh, there's also a stitch marker project, uh, progress keeper, sorry, one with a little lobster claw that's a maple leaf as well that comes with this bag. Um, I will, uh, the next prize will be at the end of August, beginning of September, uh, and that's going to be also some yarn that also is from Kim of Ginger Snap That. So um, I'll show that off on the next episode, I think. So that's my uh, that's my tiny little bit of, of business for this episode. And so I'm going to get right into the knitting. And I, I have a few things to show you, uh, especially since it's been a while since I recorded last. I actually have a finished object that I have that I started and finished uh, since I recorded last. So this is something new you haven't seen at all. Um, I really enjoyed this project. Uh, it's this huge, huge shawl. This is the Dotted Rays Shawl by Stephen West, um, which is the, this is the beginning part of it. It's a, a lovely garter stitch and eyelet. It's these double, double yarn over eyelets um, pattern. And uh, the one I use, this is the Dotted Rays Speckled Fade. Um, I did mine in a very sort of subtle gentle fade of colors you can see. I'll show you the yarns I used in a moment, but it's huge. This thing is maybe the biggest shawl that I have knit to date. Um, it's uh, what Stephen West, I think, calls a schlanket. I knit the largest size in the pattern. There's two sizes. There's like regular large and extra large, I think is what it is. Um, it used altogether probably, used five colors of yarn, but I think I used three and a half total amounts because some of the yarns I didn't use the whole ball and some I did as you get farther into it 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 um it is a lovely sort of um it's a lovely knit because it is just all garter stitch and and eyelets it's easy to follow and even though it's very very big and at the end you have something like 600 and some stitches on the needle it's mostly done by short rows so as you're knitting the rows keep getting shorter and shorter and shorter so it's not very often that you have to sort of slog across a 600 stitch row occasionally you do and the you know what took 
kind of the longest is it has this really pretty I-cord bind off um, all around it. And so at the end of the knitting, you have to, uh, the, the top I-cord there, you knit as you, um, as you go. And then the bottom I-cord, you pick up all, you, you take all those stitches that are on the needle and you I-cord bind off. So that's, that took a little bit of time, but, um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed making this. I'm going to show you how huge it is. It's like, it really is like a blanket, um, wearing it. I don't know if I can stand up and show you, but it goes, goes quite far down. I haven't even blocked this yet. I have sewn in the ends, but it, this is unblocked. Um, it is definitely longer than my wingspan and, uh, but it's really cozy and, and it's going to be super, super cozy and warm uh, when the weather starts to get a little cooler. And I'm thinking I might actually, in the meantime, take it to work and leave it in my office because um, we do, we have, a lot of places don't have air conditioning in Canada because we don't need it for an awful lot of the year. But um, <clears throat> lots of businesses do. And in the building that I work in, the um, it's called Arts Commons. It's the Performing Arts Center here in Calgary. Um, has has air conditioning and it's uh, on full blast this time of year because there are in the in our building there are five or six theater spaces of varying sizes. The largest one is a 1700 seat uh, uh, concert hall essentially, and then there's up to small theaters. The the smallest one I think seats about twenty five people, but there. Are, events that go on there routinely all through the year and when you have stage lights and you know 1700 people in a space you need to keep them cool or warm depending on what the weather's like outside so in the summer you need to keep the space cool so there's air conditioning in the building and in my office it's generally always cold <laughs> in the uh in the winter and in the summer i it gets to be a challenge of how to dress for work this time of year where it is routinely pretty warm and nice outside you know temperatures in the the high uh 20s 27 28 29 is sort of average daytime temperatures for this time of year um so when you're outside you obviously want to have nice you know summer clothes on but then i get to work and i've got shorts and a lighter summer top or a dress or something like that and then i'm freezing at my desk so i i think this might be perfect to take to work um to protect me from the air conditioning because it, uh, it it's nice and big and uh, can really wrap up in it and yeah I love it so it was a really really pleasant knit um, it just flew off my needles I think I knit this at about just over two weeks um, <clears throat> for about two weeks it was all I knit with or knit on so um, the yarns I used I'm going to take it off because it is a bit warm in my house which does not have air conditioning but um, the yarns that I used for it uh, were all of a, a very similar sort of tone I, I picked yarns that were all this sort of white and creamy kind of base but with little bits and specks of color and I just I picked it all from stash and I started with um, this skein so I have this much left of the first skein uh, the way that the shawl is constructed um, you cast on here and as you can see these eyelets are very these rows are very close together to begin with and they get farther apart and the eyelets get farther spread apart and stuff as you as you grow the shawl with the short rows so the first color I used uh, this is um, yarn ink which she's also a wonderful Canadian dyer you might have seen her on her stuff on Instagram and uh, this was a uh, Merino cashmere uh, nylon blend, I think. Oh, I have her tag. It's the colorway is flamingo. Can't really quite yarn ink. You can't quite see it there, but it's um flamingo. It's the Lux sock. Go with that, which is a 80% marine superwash merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. Really, really nice, lovely, soft, yet luxurious yarn. And I'm kind of pleased that I have enough of this left to do another pro like I easily could get a, a another project of some sort I think I have about 65 grams of that left so that was the first color I started with and then I faded it from that into and it, it does a typical kind of 
um, you do a typical kind of fade uh, progression where you start with one color and then you stripe the next color in and then you drop the first color and continue with the second, stripe the third in and stuff. Um, so my second color, uh, also a Canadian dyer. Um, this is a yarn I picked up two years ago, I think, maybe. I don't think it was last summer. I think it was the summer before. Um, at the Edmonton Folk Festival. And she's a dyer out of Edmonton, Alberta. Um, Allison Barnes collection. And uh, I really liked using this as well. This is the yarn. Um, it's that cream color, but with little variegated bits of pale, very pale, lovely pale pink and pale gray in it. And then speckles as well, mostly of black, I think, or all black, maybe. Um, this color is called Whisper. And it's a superwash merino nylon and 80-20. So that was my first color. There's pink speckles in this. It's pink and yellow and black. So it faded into that one. And then I have to kind of look at it to remember what colors I used. My next one was um, um, the, my next one. So these are the ones that uh, that all I have left are tiny bits of. So these two I used just under half of each, but then when I got into the longer rows of the shawls and stuff, I uh, was using the majority of the yarn. So this was my next one. I don't know if you can really see the color from that, but I have another whole skein of this I'll be showing you in a minute. So this is uh, Woolen Boone um, in her her sock base, I can't remember what it's called, uh, Boone Classic, which is uh, 75, 25, I think. No, it's 100%, sorry, 100% superwash merino. And uh, this is a color called Buffy. And while I was knitting this yarn into the shawl, I absolutely fell in love with this colorway. It is the most beautiful. It is this pale, pale um, cream, but it's there's obviously a little tiny bit of color dyed onto the yarn, I think, because it's almost the palest pink, palest pinky, pinky, beigey kind of color. And then these delicate speckles all the way through it of, of red and bright blue. You can see those little speckles and brown and gold. It's just, it's just so beautiful. So I, the, I did that. Then the next color I used was uh, a skein yarn, a skein of skein yarn. Um, who's an Australian dyer, one of my very favorite dyers um, uh, from Australia. And this is her top draw sock. This is a colorway called Dandelion. So also a very pale um, uh, cream color with light speckles. There's a bit more color. There's quite a bit of, of little bit, subtle bits of brown and gold and black as well in that. Let's find a spot where down here you're seeing the dandelion that's in through here with those brown and black bits that you can see. And the last yarn that I used uh, for the bottom section, which had a little more color to it, was um, a skein of, let me find the tag. So this is the, sorry, this was the Woolen Boone tag, the Boone Classic. And <clears throat> I showed you the skein tag. And then the last yarn I used was a Bluebird yarn. Who's another Canadian dyer. Um, this is a 80-20 uh, Superwash Merino nylon as well. Uh, the, this color is Letters from Home. And again, it was a cream base, but it had uh, decent sized little hints of, of red and blue and gold primarily in it. Um, so they all blended really nicely together, but they add, but as it, it got towards the bottom, there's a bit more saturation of the of the colors. As you can see, that's the uh, letters from home there down at the bottom. So it goes from that, and there's <clears throat> this is the flamingo up here. You can see there's quite a bit of pops of color in that. Uh, that's the uh, whisper, the Alison Barnes yarn. Yeah, so, but they all blended really beautifully together. <clears throat> you can't really, see, there's no lines or anything where you can see where kind of one color 
ends and another begins. And what I really love about this kind of technique with the fade is if you pick colors that have very similar base tone uh, and also have similarities in terms of the other colors they're bringing in, you you really can't see. It becomes a, a beautiful fabric that kind of looks all of one color except from a little bit of a distance, but when you look at it closer, you see more color in it as it goes. So yeah, I love it. I that was it was just a really pleasant project to knit. It uh, eats up a lot of yarn from your stash, which is kind of fun, and <clears throat> I would totally totally make this again. I think, um, yeah. So that's my finished object, and I'm kind of excited to have one to show you. Um, that I worked out of out of my, my uh, fawn knits bag here, which I just love with this beautiful tree print that she did. On the can on canvas and hot pink and it's got a bright yellow inside, really a nice bag from the fawn the fawn and the fox. Uh, Lara, who's also an Alberta maker, who just had a baby, that's very exciting. So, um, all right. So what I've been working on, um, I'm going to show you the pair of socks that I the one pair of socks that I have been working on recently. Um, I'm keeping these in this really fun little bag that my friend Pat gifted me um, periodically. She, my friend Pat lives in Houston, Texas, and uh, periodically she sends me a little package of things that she's picked up here and there at different fiber events and stuff like that and uh, sends me the best thing. She sends me some really incredible bags. So um, <clears throat> she sent me this one. It's by a company called Rainbow Studios who I believe is a Texas bag maker. Um, and I really like this bag. It's very clever. It's a bit, you know, it's your basic sort of sock sack or bucket bag, but it's got these very, very different sort of closure. It's got snaps on each side. So it snaps up and makes this sort of shape, which holds your yarn in. Um, but doesn't close up all the way as you can see but you can unsnap it on either side and just opens up into a nice bucket you could roll the sides down and it's got this um, uh, strap that you can hold it that way or you can do it that way and cinch it up or you can do it i can't remember i played with it a bit there are a bunch of different ways that you can sort of use this very clever little strap. It's got a nice size pocket inside, which is just big enough to hold a folded up pattern in it, which is great. And in this bag, I have a, a single sock, um, sort of half finished object, that this is a test knit for uh, Elise Garnier, who is the um, host of the My Two Tips podcast uh, on YouTube. And she is a Canadian knitter and uh, now, pattern designer. Um, she lives in Vancouver. I met her last year at uh, uh, Knit City in, when I went to Knit City in Vancouver and uh, she was looking for some uh, testers for her first sock pattern and I thought what an excellent way to encourage me to actually work on some socks. So um, I finished the first sock which was the requirement for the test. I really enjoyed it. It is a pattern sock. Uh, you can see it's got this, these panels of, of um, twisted stitches up the front. It's a really nice sock pattern. Um, I don't know yet when she's going to put it out um, on Ravelry, but uh, um, the test, I think the testers will be all finished in the next week or two, couple of weeks, maybe two weeks. So hopefully after that, I know she's, um, she's completed any changes to the pattern. It's a really enjoyable uh, a pleasant pattern with a nice um, that's not overly complicated and uh, yeah I really enjoyed knitting this first sock and I'm looking forward to casting on the second one so this is the first sock as I said um, I don't know what to tell you about it other than uh, it's so I she's got some options for choices for the heels and the toe and stuff I I use the eye of partridge heel which she did in her original sock. Uh, I love how that turned out so pretty like that. Uh, and a rounded toe. It's a top-down sock uh, knit from the cuff down with a, a slip stitch cuff, one by one ribbing slip stitches. And like I said, this panel that goes down the front of the leg and the front of the foot. Um, 
just enough with that little panel to really keep you kind of motivated and interested but plenty but plenty simple enough that uh, it was good sort of carry around knitting and um, stuff like that so uh, the yarn that I used is uh, ancient arts yarn in their um, fingering sock uh, sock nato I think is the the um, uh, base and the color is Lake Louise and if you don't know uh, this part of Canada um, Lake Louise is is one of our national parks here that's sort of between Calgary where I live and Vancouver you drive over the Rocky Mountains and Lake Louise is one of several national parks in the mountains uh, and Lake Louise is famous for um, the lake itself is absolutely beautiful and these colors are very true to the it's a glacier lake it's a high mountain glacier lake so the water is often this beautiful uh, bluey green that's the color that often comes off of glaciers um, I don't know what causes the water to be that color but it's a beautiful beautiful color and then it has these tiny little hints of uh, well it's got a little bit of like forest green in it like pine trees and a uh, little bit of white and gray uh, like the mountains and the snow and it's got tiny little bits of a brighter green as well um, it just it looks so much like pictures of of or if you see it in real life too <laughs> um, it looks so much like the uh, Lake Louise and it's beautiful and, it, and this is a fingering weight but it is a almost kind of into sport it is a heavier fingering weight so it made a nice dense fabric I knit it on a 2.25 millimeter um, chow goo needle and uh, it made a, a really nice dense heavy sock these would be excellent socks in the winter so yeah I really really enjoyed that uh, highly recommend when Elise gets the pattern out on um, on Ravelry that you check it out it's uh, again it's called the straight line I don't know if I said that before it's called the straight line socks and uh, I will uh, put it in the show notes I won't be able to link it yet because I don't think the pattern is out but once it is go check it out so I just have to do the second sock of that now so the other two projects that I have worked on uh, since I talked to you last are both uh, my sweaters um, one of which I didn't bring with me. Hang on. I'm going to go get it. I'm back. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't. I got all set up over here with all my stuff, but I forgot the sweater that I'm currently knitting on because I was knitting on it in the living room, uh, earlier today and left it over there on the couch. So, um, this is what I've been working on most recently. I've shown this before in the podcast. This is my eerie sweater. Um, from Lynn Magazine, issue number four, I think. It's a design by Isabel Kramer, um, and I'm knitting it out of Abundant, abundant Earth. Um, this is yarn I got last year at uh, Knit City in Vancouver. Sadly, I'm not going to Knit City this year. I don't think, I can't really afford it, either the trip to Vancouver and the hotel and all that stuff. Or the yarn, all the yarn I would buy there, and I have so much yarn, so I'm very sad. But I think I'm not gonna go. Um, this is Joseph and Annie is the uh, yarn base, which is 90% domestic merino and 10% Washington Targi. So this is domestic merino; it's American merino. Um, I love this yarn. It's a um, Abundant Earth Fibers, a company uh, on Whidbey Island, off the coast of Seattle. I think and um, it's just the most beautiful beautiful squishy wonderful yarn um, and let me show you I've been making great progress on the Erie sweater uh, when I showed it to you last I had knit it's a knit from the top down and it's a raglan construction and I was about here so I had knit from the top to about there where that marker is and since then I have done all the rest of the body pretty much I have one repeat left of the uh, I think I'm gonna do one more repeat of the the pattern the cabling sort of pattern in the front this V here and uh, that should be about the right length to start the ribbing for the bottom so um, 
and then it will be the fun of sleeve island although i don't i don't feel like i get some people i know hate knitting sleeves i don't mind knitting sleeves um but uh so it will be a long sleeve sweater um it's got this marvelous pattern down the front uh this sort of horseshoe it's not really a cable it's it's a it's actually a lace pattern this pattern down the front is made with um knit two together slip slip knits and yarn overs and then this cable that goes different directions on each side and then this which is actually a faux cable this little one here and then the whole rest of the front body is in a double seed stitch and then the back is plain stockinette it's a super enjoyable knit this pattern it's um just enough interest in all of this you know to really kind of keep you motivated and and uh lots of sort of oh i'll just complete this round or you know kind of knitting but not so hard that i have to look at the charts all the time i at this point now in the body i totally uh can knit it essentially from memory it's very e that it's very convenient that because it's three different charts actually this little one then this cable and then the center one but this is four rows and this is eight rows so as long as i kind of know where and it's very easy to see what i'm doing in this four rows just by reading my knitting so i know where in each where in that i have to then do the cable cross for the eight row cable and then this you can just basically read the knitting as well you can easily see what you have to do next so mostly i just kind of use the chart to tick off where i am to remember you know if i put it down like i did for a while i actually had put this away in a bag and didn't knit on it for several weeks while i was knitting on that shawl it was easy to pick up and know where i was i mean i could have figured it out just by looking at the sweater but it was easier that I was just ticking off my rows but uh, yeah I'm, I, as I said I'm almost ready to start the ribbing at the bottom I tried it on the other day it fits really nicely I did a I did one little sort of modification really to the pattern which is I actually added in in the pattern and you just knit straight down from the armpit but I did actually add in you see those markers there um, four little increases where those markers are on either side of the back just to give it a tiniest bit of a-line shaping because that's kind of how my body's built i'm not super chesty uh the thickest part of my body at this at this point in my life is my midsection so i wanted it to, to uh fit nicely through the chest but i didn't want it too tight on my midsection so i added a few little gentle increases to just give it a tiny bit more room uh through the midsection and I said I tried it on the other day like day before yesterday Friday I think I tried it on it fits really nicely uh looks really great as my husband said uh, I tried it on and he said I think that's the best one yet um the yarn like I said is so nice and, and um I can't wait to wash and block it and have it it'll just soften up that much more but but the little bit of targi that's in there gives the merino just the greatest sort of bounce to it it's a really bouncy stretchy yarn um it uh, the stitch definition is fantastic as you can see and uh, um it's light it's a sport weight this is knit out of a sport weight so uh even though it's a you know fair size it'll be a long sleeve sweater it doesn't feel at all heavy um sometimes you know all this yarn can feel like uh, a heavy heavy sweater this does not feel heavy it is very light and bouncy and springy and uh, will be a great sweater for pretty much any weather uh, other than hot, hot summer but I mean it'll be great for spring and fall just over a t-shirt or something it will be great in the winter um, I think it will keep me nice and warm um, I'm on my third ball of yarn there's a these are sort of classic sport weight um, 360 yards and 100 grams so I'm, I've got this much left of the third skein of yarn which will get me to the ribbing I don't know that it'll get me all the way through the ribbing at the bottom but that will leave me two and three quarters probably uh, skeins of yarn to do the sleeves and the neckband which is going to be plenty so I'm really pleased with that um, can't wait to finish this now I've been 
kind of exclusively knitting on this for the last week or two. It's it's excellent. Um, it's actually sort of perfect TV knitting because, like I said, it uh, I don't have to concentrate too much on the on the pattern anymore. I can kind of just knit away on it. Um, yeah, that's all I can think of to say about it. But I love this. I highly recommend this pattern. Um, I think now it's actually available uh, separately. I think. I know Len Magazine is, is releasing the ability to, to buy some of those patterns separately without the magazine, although I love the magazine, so I highly recommend that. Um, I'm keeping it in this lovely uh, box bag that I don't know the designer of. I think I mentioned this before, but was, this was a gift to me. It's just some Australian maker, and it's a fantastically beautiful box bag. So that's my lovely eerie sweater and the other thing that I have been working on over the last few weeks is also a sweater although I'm not working so much on this one right now because it's worsted weight and it is a heavier bulky sweater and I'm a fair ways into the knit now and it was got getting to be a bit hot for this time of year to have all this wool on my lap. This is my Weekender sweater by Andrea Maori. Um, I'm knitting it out of this beautiful beaver slide dry goods, 100% uh, merino, uh, worsted weight in, what is this color called? Snowberry, I think. It's so beautiful. I just love this yarn. My only, it's so nice to knit with. I, if you haven't tried beaver slide dry goods and you like a kind of slightly rustic yarn, I highly recommend this. It's, it's not rusty, rustic, rusty. It's not rustic in the sense that it's not scratchy at all. It's so soft. There's a nice lanolin content in the wool, so as you knit with it, you can just feel it softens your hands a little bit. It feels wonderful to knit with. The only thing, um, there are, this this ball had quite a number of knots in it, but that doesn't even bother me because the fact that it's 100% merino and it's not a superwash means it's very easy to just untie those knots and. Uh, spit slice them, felt them together. Um, that's the way I've been joining the, each ball of yarn uh, and it felts and joins really, really nicely. And um, the only thing is that there is a fair bit of, uh, as you can see like right there, there's a fair bit of veggie matter in the yarn, as is often the case with uh, more rustic yarns. This yarn is, is from sheep in Montana. It's actually sent up to Canada to uh, a mill right near me, actually a mill owned by the family of a dear friend of mine, um, which is Custom Woolen Mills. It's sent up to Custom Woolen Mills to be, they call them mule spun. Um, they have a beautiful old, uh, I think it's an antique actually, mule spinner, which is a kind of a spinning machine. Um, so it's it's spun up here, here in Alberta, which I think is really cool. Um, <clears throat> but it does have little bits of, of vegetation, little bits of hay and things in it. So. I do spend a fair amount of time as I'm knitting, sort of picking little bits of hay and straw and stuff out, but I don't mind that. And it's going to be the most fantastic winter sweater. I'm, this is one of those projects where I, I'm so excited knitting on it because I can't wait for it to be um, fall and to be able to wear finish this and have this finished and be able to wear it come fall. So <clears throat> um, it's knit. Uh, if you don't know the Weekender sweater, which is, I think I said, but... I didn't, uh, designed by Andrea Maori. Um, it's knit inside out, so it's knit with the stock on that side out, uh, in mostly in the round. So you knit, it saves you from having to purl all the time. But the inside will actually eventually be the outside of the sweater. So the purl side will be the outside. It's got this slip stitch down the front. So this is the front half of the sweater. Um, I bound off up here for this will be the neckline at the front and then these stitches are on holes on either side here which will be across the top of the shoulders it's a boxy construction um, yeah so it'll be kind of like that um, and it's got a split hem at the bottom I'll show you there's a split where is it there it is right there in the hem and it's a little and it's a high low a bit so it's a bit lower in the back so I finished all of the front and I am now just working up the back 
which is that's the will be the inside eventually. Um, <clears throat> once you get to the top, you turn it the other way around and three needle bind off the shoulders, and then you just pick up and add. Uh, sort of, I think it's might be long sleeves. I think it's long sleeves in the pattern. We'll see how much yarn exactly I have for the sleeves. I think I will have one skein for each sleeve, which should be enough to get me long sleeves. But yeah, so this is the Weekenders. So I've put some good progress on it since I showed it off last on the podcast. Uh, thoroughly enjoy it. It's really a pleasure to knit. As I said, the only thing that sort of stalled me off on this is it, there's a lot of hot, of warm wool on hot, <clears throat> hot days. Our house gets really heated up uh, because most of the windows on our house face west. And so we get the late afternoon sun, sort of the hottest part of the day, the late afternoon sun beating in on that side of our house. And it can get pretty hot, warm in here. Um, <clears throat> so even with, and we have a couple of fans in the living room, but even with the fans on, this was a bit much for some of those warm days. So that may, I may put that off a little bit longer until <clears throat> the fall. Although I really want to wear it in the fall. So we shall see, maybe in August when it's not so hot. <clears throat> so that's all the projects that I've been working on. I have two upcoming projects that uh, I'm thinking about a lot, so I thought I'd talk about them a little briefly. I really want to knit the um, Caitlin Hunter pattern, the, I think it's Tanya sweater. Uh, I know a lot of people call it Tegna. It's spelled T-E-G-N-A, but I believe it's pronounced Tanya. Um, and uh, I really want to make that. That's a nice lightweight fingering weight, uh, simple sort of spring and fall sweater. It's a uh, elbow length sleeves and it's got lace detail at the bottom. You've, I'm sure you've seen it so many, so many people and so many podcasters have made it. Um, and I had this beautiful, this is ancient arts as well. Um, uh, this is a BFL, 100% BFL I do believe. Um, and I have three skeins of this. This was actually gifted to me uh, by my, a friend of mine here in town, my friend Vanessa, whose mother was a knitter and she passed away about a year and a half or so ago. And Vanessa had a big bag of, of yarn and some tools and stuff that she gifted me, which was very sweet. I felt very honored to have uh, her mother's project stuff passed on to me. Um, and this is just beautiful. This is, I think this color is called Prussian Blue. Um, some of the ancient art colors are named after uh, dogs or cats. Um, and I think this is named after a Prussian blue cat. Uh, it's this really lovely blue gray. And as I said, there are three skeins of it, which is enough, would be enough for me to, to do the tiny top. Um, and I swatched for it the other day, unfortunately. And I, this is a swatch on the needles that were recommended in the pattern. And unfortunately, my swatch is too small. I didn't get gauge. I almost got gauge, but not quite in the recommended needles. So I'm trying to decide now. I will probably swatch again going up a needle size, but this BFL tends to be um, a light fingering. Uh, as sometimes, sometimes BFL, BFL doesn't often seem to have that spring and bounce to it that uh, a merino can have uh, or a of some other yarns, it, and this is a um, it's a longer staple BFL, longer staple fiber, and it just isn't as springy. You can see not as springy as some yarns, and it's a little bit lighter gauge wise. So I think I'm going to have to go up a needle size if I want to do. The, I know I'm going to have to go up a needle size if I want to do the sweater out of this yarn, but I don't. I'm a little worried about the fabric. I mean, obviously the thing to do is swatch it again and see what happens. Cause this is, this is after I washed and blocked it and I did give it a stretch and it doesn't, it just is that much to show. I can't remember what the gauge in the, the gauge in the pattern is, but I think I was like four, three or four rows short of four inches in the row gauge for sure. And a little bit out in the stitch gauge. Too much to, uh, too much to do the sweater on the size needles. But it, as you can see, because I can, you can see through it, it is a fairly um, open 
cage already. It's a little, this particular swatch is a little wobbly in its, um, the stitches, stitches don't look fantastic because this particular ball, a bunch of it as you can see, was part of something that Vanessa's mom had started to knit and I uh, unwound. So um, there's a little crimp in that yarn now. Um, <clears throat> which won't be a problem with the other two skeins, which are still in the skein. But anyway, so I, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try going up a needle size and see if I can get a little, uh, get close enough to gauge to be comfortable with knitting the sweater. I'd really like to knit it out of this. I think it would be really pretty. Otherwise, if I knit that sweater, I'll have to pick a different yarn. And I'm trying really hard to use the yarns that are in my stash, not buy new yarns for sweaters because I have lots of sweater quantities in my stash, but um, I don't have a lot of solid color uh, in fingering weight. A lot of my fingering weight sweater quantities are uh, something variegated. So this would be perfect. So yeah, we'll see that, but this is, some, this is going to be, if I can sort of work this out, this will be a cast on as soon as I fi finish one or maybe both of these two sweaters that I'm working on, at least one. I think as soon as I finish the Eerie, I'm gonna cast on a new sweater because I can't stop myself because I'm crazy sweater obsessed. And the other sweater I wanna knit, so I said I was knitting the um, the Woolen Boone, the Boone Classic in the Buffy color in my shawl. And the entire time I was knitting, I, was, I just kept thinking, I love this color, I love this color. And bless them, my local yarn store Sal's Wool and Boone now, Stash here in Calgary, uh, carries Wool and Boone, and that's where I got a while ago, not not too long ago, but that's where I got the one that I used in that. <clears throat> and I thought, well, I'm just, I was over there the other, right in the neighborhood the other day, and I thought, I'm just going to wander in and see if there's any chance they have more of this. And sure enough, they did. I bought four skeins more of the Buffy because I was just, I love it so much, and I thought it would make a beautiful sweater. So this is what it looks like in the skein. As I said, it's this pale, pale. You probably can't tell the color that there's this just hint of, it's actually kind of like the palest hint of apricot, really, is is in on this cream, like the palest, palest apricot. But then as you can see, there are all these glorious speckles and it's very delicate and uh, in browns, like I said, browns and greeny blues and there's some sort of orange and red and it's really really pretty so I got four skeins of it and the sweater I want to make is from lane issue <coughs> number five which I picked up the same day I picked up this um, I just am so in love with Lynn magazine I'm not a huge knitting magazine person I, I used to buy a lot more knitting magazines and found that they piled up and I didn't use them very often. I mean, enjoyed looking through them and reading the articles and things, but I wasn't knitting a lot of patterns from them. But the thing I'm finding with Len Magazine is every one of the, the issues, although, you know, they're, they're a bit pricey. They're in the, here in Canada, it's about $30 for an issue, but there are three quarters of the patterns in there are stuff I really want to knit and really practically can see myself knitting. I'm already <clears throat> working on two sweaters from past issues. So, and this will be my third, I think. So, yeah, anyway, love Lane Magazine. Love it, love it. Um, and ha I have all five issues at this point. This is the most recent one. And the sweater that I want to make using that beautiful uh, woolen boon is this pattern called Selvage. Let me see if you can see that. Which is a, a sort of a loose stockinette pullover. Um, really pretty. I think it will be beautiful in the yarn I have and the color I have. And it has this lovely detail of a little lace uh, in um, um, a silk mohair just across here, almost as if you have like a silk mohair camisole or something underneath, but that's just knitted right onto it at the front. So that's what I'm going to, and it's a, a drop shoulder boxy sort of construction, loose fitting. I'm going to use this for the body and then I've been trying to decide. I have I have a decent little pile of different colors of mohair. I have about seven or eight colors uh, sort of in leftovers because I used it all when I knit the, um, oh, what was it called? The Stephen West pattern. I can't think what it was called right now. 
I look back in my past show notes that are right in front of me here. Um, the Penguono. <laughs> I knew I'd find it quickly in my book. Um, and I and I was holding yarns uh, double with the silk mohair and another yarn in my Penguono. So I have a bunch of different colors of that. And I'm trying to decide if I have a color that will go with this um, or whether I need to go buy. I don't want to go buy another color, but I'm not totally sold. So I have this pale apricot, which would be pretty. And it is, it does slightly pick up that apricot hue in the yarn. So maybe that, or I have this. I don't think that one works. What do you think? I think this is a little too, uh, it's a sort of a grayish pink. And I think it's just a little too cold of a color for, this is, this is predominantly quite a warm, warm color with that hint of apricot and the warm colors of the speckles. So I have a bright orange as well, but I just think that's going to be too much. So I'm between either this or picking up essentially a creamy white or like a something that's much closer to that to the base color or a really really soft warm pale pink might do it as well so yeah I don't know but I really want to make that sweater and so one of those two the Tanya or the Svelg I think that sweater is pronounced one of those two is going to go on my needles as soon as I the eerie is finished probably this one maybe both i don't know i don't know anyway so that's that's all my uh projects that i've been working on and um i think that's everything i have to talk to you about today uh, uh thank you again for coming and joining me and uh i will i will not be six weeks again before i record i promise um i will uh hopefully only be about two weeks and uh, hopefully we'll have a finished sweater to show you. So until I see you next time, happy knitting.